Hello YouTube. Well, it's been a little while since I've talked to you last, but uh, I figure while we're all uh, quarantined out, uh, avoiding the uh, cooties of the coronavirus 19, uh, there's nothing else to do. I may as well um, show you what projects I'm working on. Um, mostly right now, I've been trying to upgrade my 3D printer situation. And uh, what you're looking at here is my scratch-built Prusa i3 Mark II uh, printer um, that I'm building. This is built to replace, let's show you, uh, my old printer, which is a printer bought simple 1405 um, maker's kit. Um, and while this device has served me pretty well, there's no heated bed, its uh, build volume is kind of small at 100 millimeters cubed. And um, some people think because it's made of wood, it's not very rigid, so it's not very accurate. Although um, I think it's capable of fairly decent prints. I mean, on this robot here, all the black parts I printed with that printer. Um, you can see I'm getting as close as I can. That scratch there in the middle of this uh, upright part there I put uh, in there by accident with a uh, screwdriver but uh, the black parts work well enough to uh, to be functional I mean you've seen that robot work before on some of my other videos um, here's part of uh, what I got going on here I mean to make that printer um, so if Prusa makes all the parts available on their uh, github site so you can download them uh, and then uh, starting with that little printer I showed you, uh, which is only capable of printing in PLA, so it's not ideal, but it was able to print all of the structural parts one at a time. Um, this piece right here, of which is a, uh, a corner of that machine that holds all the rods together, this piece took about an hour to print. I was probably overdoing it using infill of 50%. And also, um, I guess I didn't carefully enough read the instructions and uh, I was using support, <laughs> which you don't have to do when you print these parts. And this is an extra one because when I was cleaning up the support, I actually broke a corner off. You can see it right here. I'm sorry about the lighting here, but um, yeah, I figured, shucks, if I'm going to print all the parts for this thing myself, they may as well be perfect. So, yeah. Um, other things, like uh, as I'm sourcing parts for this machine, uh, you could get a cheap Chinese clone uh, power supply. I decided a uh, power supply is something that's important enough that I want a name brand uh, one that will be, in my opinion, safer. So I ordered from the electronic supply store a Meanwell Supply. However, um, this has a slightly different footprint from the one that Prusa uses, and they have a 3D part, which is, um, uh, it ends up being a structural member. I'm going to try and do this with, uh, one hand, and I think I'll fail miserably. Or maybe not. You can see that uh, bracket there is where it mounts onto the frame and then the power supply plugs into this unit here. So it's got to be, uh, so this part had to be resized so that I could um, use that Meanwell power supply. And uh, so I used Tinkercad. Uh, which gives you strange names when you start modding stuff. And I took the original Prusa part and imported it as an STL, and I was able to um, shorten the part in this axis and lengthen it in this axis if I moved some of the screw holes around or just all out deleted them so that it would actually work with the Meanwell power supply, which they give you the dimensions for here, right? And then ultimately I put that on Thingiverse. So if you want to download it um, and you're building a printer like mine, you're able to. Other um, resources, there's a guy named, um, well, his website is toms3d.org. 
He's a German guy in Bavaria, and he's got a really awesome YouTube channel, and he also documents building a Prusa i3 Mark II clone. And um, after watching his video a couple of times, I followed a lot of his suggestions, and uh, for some parts that were unobtainable, or at least not easily obtainable, like the frame here, this is made out of some uh, OSB, um, which I happen to have left over from a shelving project uh, in my garage, and I just uh, sanded it and painted it. And kind of as a joke, I emailed Prusa and they actually sent me the image of the warning sticker. I don't have a color printer, but I printed it with my laser, 3M adhesive the back of it and put some packing tape on the front. Now I got a warning sticker, haha. Uh, let's see, companies like Printed Solid offer the actual Mark 42 uh, heated bed that's got the uh, embedded uh, metal discs uh, so that you can do device homing. I'm still not sold on the cheap Chinese uh, clone level sensors. I don't think they're sensitive enough. Um, and I've got a uh, actual Prusa level sensor on order also from Printed Solid, but I'll show you. Um, it works well enough that you're able to do a auto home and a mesh uh, bed level test every time without hitting the bed. So those are mechanical end stop switches. You can hear the click, but here, the sensor just stops before it hits that calibration disc um, without hitting the bed. That's nice, right? I'll show you the mesh test because that's kind of neat too. It's reading each of the nine discs and measuring um, so that the firmware can um, compensate for any possible um, warpage of your heated bed. That all works great. Now there is an XYZ calibration test which this device, um, I'd say maybe one out of five, it's able to successfully do it. The other times it'll um, start to hit the bed and so I'll cancel before it does any damage to the bed. Um, but that's why I think it needs the, um, the actual Prusa, they call it a Pinda sensor. It's an inductive um, sensor that detects metal. Um, and so, um, their sensor is sensitive to four millimeters, whereas these clones can only be sensitive up to two millimeters max. I think it needs the four millimeters to detect the bed um, as it's coming down. You have to start the test with the uh, with this axis all the way maxed out the Z axis. And so it's coming, it's motoring down. And I don't think it's able to detect the bed in enough time to stop the motor. Um, and so, yeah, it's a work in progress. Uh, I can't mount the power supply with my uh, Tinkercad designed part until I actually get this thing printing. Uh, likewise, for the uh, motherboard mounting uh, box, um, I just don't have a printer right now with a big enough build volume. And what I'm waiting for to complete this thing to get it printing is a gear that sits inside this little housing on this uh, extruder motor. Um, I've ordered it and uh, it's apparently on the slow boat from, uh, from China. Uh, so anyways, that's a super quick rambling tour of my 3D printer project. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, once I get this thing up and running, I'm planning on using it to build a lot more robots and some other uh, cool machines and uh, we'll get the channel rebooted so to speak and uh, get some more projects online so I hope you enjoyed that little tour and I'll talk to you later thanks for watching